When was the last time you went to a party for a two-year-old? I don't know if you've been to one recently, but if you have, you know there can be a little bit of confusion about whose party it really is. Of course, you know who the party's for, but for those two-year-olds, well, that's another story. Each child makes the assumption as soon as they set foot in the party, well, that it's just for them. And because of that, every parent knows that when you're throwing a party for a two-year-old, you need to distract the other two-year-olds with a present of their own. And that, my friends, is the genius of party favors. If you put a party favor in front of a two-year-old, like the little candles, the stickers, the trinkets, well, it'll distract a kid from the fact the party is really not about them, but it may be about another little boy or girl entirely. But by giving them party favors, aren't we really just convincing them that it is kind of about them? I'm not trying to make you feel guilty because I, I gave out party favors. I have four kids. They're genius for two-year-olds. But what happens as we grow up? Um, what happens when we are nine or 10 or 30 and still finding ways to convince ourselves that the world really does revolve around us? In the book Economics by Stephen Smith and David Markham, they actually talk about what can happen if your ego becomes a little too overinflated. Here are a few of the signs they point to in the book that might indicate you think the world revolves around you. You begin to see someone you work with as a rival or think about how you can beat them. You take it personally when others have a disagreement with you. You believe that you don't ever deserve to lose a game, a conversation, a debate, a promotion, a raise. And when you believe that, you end up not being gracious in defeat. I mean, we could go on and on about what happens to a person when they're controlled by an inflated ego. Somewhere along the line, we just need to remind ourselves in each other that it's okay for something to not be about us. More importantly, as parents and leaders, we need to raise a generation to, of children to understand how, how to put others first. It's just one of the reasons we're taking a month of April to discover a little bit more about humility. We define humility as putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. I think sometimes as parents and leaders, we struggle with finding the sweet spot between an overly inflated ego and a bad self-esteem. We try to teach the principle of putting others first, but sometimes end up with a kid who has a bad self-esteem. Or we try to avoid a bad self-esteem esteem and image and end up with a kid with an overly inflated ego who thinks the world revolves around them only. So where is the balance? What principle can we use to help our kids learn to treat others better, well, and better than, and better, better with a healthy self-esteem? It's actually a principle that Jesus personally demonstrates in the Gospels. It's the principle of humility. If anyone had a right to have an ego, it was Jesus. When he stepped on this planet, he had every right to be full of himself because, after all, I mean, he was God. But instead, Scripture teaches us that he gave up his own rights as God, put everyone else before himself. You know, most of us think uh, we deserve more. Somewhere in the dark corners of our mind, most of us think the world actually does revolve around us. And the reason we look at Jesus to illustrate humility is because he didn't. He didn't think he deserved it all, but he did. So throughout this very powerful month on the Christian calendar, we're going to look at Jesus' life to understand the sacrifice that he made, to understand just what it meant for him to put us first. If you look at the Gospels, you find that Jesus' whole life and death was centered on humility. This month, we'll look at several of these moments throughout the Gospels, starting with a special meal Jesus and his friends ate together. The crowds in Jerusalem wanted to make Jesus king, but instead of shopping for a crown, Jesus showed what a real leader looks like, and it doesn't involve a throne. Rather, he got down and washed his disciples' feet. That night, he taught them the principle that the first shall be last and the last will be first. 
He explained that he had come to serve them and that they needed to do the same for each other. Next, we take a look at the very garden where Jesus showed an unbelievable understanding of how important it was to put the will of the Father ahead of his own. Jesus knew why he came to earth. While he prayed for his Father to make another way, ultimately, Jesus knew that he had to let go of what he wanted for the sake of saving the world from sin. On Easter Sunday, we'll start with Jesus' trial and end with celebrating the resurrection. The religious leaders are up in arms because Jesus has claimed to be God. It doesn't matter that it's true. They're still ready to dish out the ultimate punishment. And Jesus chose to give up everything and take it so that no one else had to. We want kids to learn that because Jesus put us first, we should put others first. Next, we'll revisit the Great Commission and Ascension. Jesus gave disciples an incredible mission to tell the whole world about his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus wanted his disciples to not only talk about his story, but to live it out in the way they loved others. Kids will learn that they too can put others first by doing what Jesus said. Finally, we'll take a closer look at the memory verse, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Paul writes, Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you're proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. This comes from a letter that Paul, where Paul talks about how Jesus is the embodiment of humility. He had every right to be God because he is God. But he laid down that right for the sake of a world that needed to have a relationship with God. And maybe when we look at the people around and understand just how much Jesus loves them, it will change the way we treat them. And we will make sure to put them first. All these stories add up to one thing. Jesus, the rightful king of everything and everyone, chose over and over and over to put others first by letting go of what he deserved. And we can follow his example when we put the needs of others over our own.